Today, we look at 2019 and I give you a channel update with new ideas and strategies. And we answer a bunch of your questions from the mailbag. So let's go ahead and get to it on another episode of the Gideon's Tactical Show. A whole nother year is upon us, 2019. Welcome folks to another episode here. And I believe this is uh, episode 19, I think, uh, of the Gideon's Tactical Show. And really excited to give you a quick update on just some ideas that I have for the new year, some new strategies, uh, just to give us more entertainment, more information, and just more value to the time that we spend in front of our screens. Because that's something that I'm trying to do personally in my own personal life is actually trying to limit some of the screen time I found in the last half of the year I was spending a lot more time just you know either just blowing through you know YouTube and just watching stuff that had no value to life uh, you know, sitting there just watching a little bit too much of Netflix, things like that. Um, and so I'm trying to dial back the amount of time I spend in front of the screen and really trying to pick what va what brings value to my life and then allowing that in and, and kind of just being better with my time on screen, um, in front of the screen. And uh, uh, I want to do that for you guys so that you guys even find more value, even higher, um, you know, likability, if you will, in each episode of Getting These Tactical Show, as well as our regular regular week in, week out review. So I'm looking forward to just sharing with you some of the ideas that I have and want to hear your guys' feedback. So that's really the first part of this. And what I want to do in 2019 is get you, the viewers, a little bit more involved. I feel like sometimes with the reviews, and that's why I started last year doing the show, was to have more of an interface with you guys, have more of a back and forth and have a different type of environment. Um, than just a review. Sometimes I feel with the reviews, I'm just talking at the camera um, and I want to talk to the camera. And, and there's a difference, you know, I believe uh, with that too is, you know, we're having a, a dialogue um, whereas ad is just like, here's the information, do what you will, you know, kind of thing. And so uh, I'm, I want to try and change that a little bit in our daily reviews. And so uh, some of the ideas that I have, and I want to hear your guys' feedback and just getting you guys more involved is asking you guys to rate more stuff. What, when I do a review, I'm going to, re, you know, do, do my take on it, but then oh, uh, offering to you guys for the comments below, hey, what is your guys' thoughts on this? What do you guys think about this? Um, let's rate, what, what is your rating? You know, um, I'm, I'm reviewing this flashlight and I really like it, but what, what do you think about it? And just kind of offering up that aspect to it as well as doing more fun, um, uh, out in the bush videos, we did this, if you missed it, the last show last Saturday, uh, GT Winter Cookout, that was a blast to do, but we did an activity where we carved spoons and then um, we out there rated them and picked the winner, but also I invited you guys, the viewers, to rate them and see who you would pick. And I wanna go even further with that, possibly pick winners um, based off of your guys' ratings of different things that we do, different you know uh, ideas, a a anyway. But really getting you guys more involved and rating stuff and asking for different ideas to test stuff. Uh, I did this on Facebook and Instagram and that's really important if you're not following us already on Instagram and Facebook. That's a really easy way. I, I often put up videos like that. Hey, what, do you, what are your guys' thoughts on this? Or hey, wh what, are, what? how would you guys like to see me test out this tomahawk? Because I have a certain system in my mind of ways that I test certain things and oftentimes um, I test them the same way so that I can have data points compared to the last tomahawk I did or the last knife or last multi-tool, whatever. Um, but I like to think outside the boxes as well and I want to hear from you guys what do you guys think are some good ideas different ways of doing things of testing things different ways and doing that um, as well as taking you guys along more often instead of just producing a review um, doing like what we did in the winter cookout GT winter cookout again I mean that was just so much fun to, to create uh, and I just have enjoyed just watching it a few times and just laughing along and it's, put, it's putting a smile on my face just watching that interaction again and doing more things like that of hey we're gonna take a couple people out um, you know, we're going to turn the camera around instead of just focusing on the product. We're going to focus on the whole experience and just have fun building a shelter today and goofing around while we do that and knocking it over and, you know, like doing that as well and creating more content like that on top of our regular videos. 
So that's the first thing that I want to change up in 2019 and update for you. And uh, we'll take a quick break just to remind you guys about Amazon and all the links that we offer to you guys below. Several things that I'm going to show you of uh, upcoming reviews here in just a moment. Uh, I will have in the links in the description below over to Amazon. Really appreciate it when you guys use those hyperlinks. Helps us continue to make content just like this. So uh, the next thing that I want to do is do some out of the box uh, stuff. Possibly talk a little bit more um, movies. Uh, games that maybe my family's playing, uh, books, you know, uh, I got this for Christmas. I've heard really good reviews on it. The Day of the Jackal, maybe many of you have read it, um, from Frederick Forsyth. Hopefully I pronounced that right. I'm terrible at pronouncing names. But um, anyway, giving you guys book reviews of like, hey guys, I really like this book. You might enjoy it, you know, particularly in this kind of vein of outdoors and survival and, you know, tactical and all that kind of stuff. Uh, in music, you know, different music. Like right now, uh, Stevie Wonder's uh, Superstition. Um, been listening to that uh, a bunch. I, I kind of rediscovered Stevie Wonder. So I've been listening to some of his music recently. You know, and a lot of his stuff is uh, live streaming on Amazon Prime Music, if you have that. So if you have a Prime account, you can have Prime Music. Um, so, you know, thing, doing things like that that are a little outside the box. You know, I got a cool um, foot rocket for um, GT Junior for his, uh, for Christmas. You know, doing a quick video on that if it's working, you know, and after a couple of months of it's still holding up and why we like it. You know, just doing stuff that's really outside of the norm of just like knives and flashlights and multi-tools and firearms and like all that. Uh, going a little bit and sometimes giving you guys a little bit different flavor that has to do more with um, the family. I'm shooting to do that and just life in general um, in this new year. So doing videos that are a little bit outside the box, like my top two favorite survival movies, you know, things like that and why. Um, so looking forward to doing some ideas like that. I have some brainstorming ideas. Again, would love to hear any ideas that you guys may have of topics, concepts, things like that. Before I share with you just some of the classic reviews coming up real soon that you can be prepared for, uh, I wanna remind you also about Blade HQ. Uh, we'll have those hyperlinks below for some of the knives I'm just about to show you here and just talk about uh, in just a moment for you guys. Another simple way to help support the channel when you guys use those hyperlinks over to Blade HQ. And looking forward to uh, getting my hands on some more more stuff and this will lead right into some uh, upcoming reviews that we got going on is going to do more OTFs out the front knives. Um, you guys know about that bench made that I got and how after three days it fell off the track and would not reset. You know, I mean, I would be able to reset it and I'd shoot it a couple more times and fall off the track again. So um, that is on the way back to Benchmade or uh, excuse me, on the way back to Blade HQ waiting to um, have another one. And I bought that one, you know, so um, I've heard some people sometimes complain about Blade HQ's return policy. I have never had an issue and, uh, everything up till now you know i've uh purchased through them and then sent it back for repairs um and i don't tell them like i'm aaron the one that did you know i just send it back like any one of you guys and always get great um help with the return process so um anyway looking forward to getting that bench made back or a new one and seeing what happens with that but more otfs more autos um we got the 511 dart uh their new larger one we got the whole amp series coming real soon we got the uh tops operator seven i think i showed you guys this before we have gotten it out and tested it had some really hard thrashing on it super impressed with what it can do um, we have not done the edge retention test but uh, we will be doing that as well rope cutting because it's 1075 versus 1095 from tops with the Mohawk Hunter uh, right there we got uh, what's it called more stove stuff coming lots of stove ideas this year more Leatherman tools uh, Swiss Army knives you guys have been asking me for Swiss Army knives I already have the Trekker one-handed open so going to be doing a review on that alone and then doing that head-to-head -head against my rebar out in the woods and doing a whole day with just the two to see which one I like more if you're out in the woods uh, let's see here more cookware I've got all kinds of little cooking utensils and things I'm working on right now from the Gerber devour little multi-tool spork thing they got to uh the morsel which is like a custom longer cool thing for camping and hiking um let's see here i got steel wheel piercers both the uh, liner lock and the titanium frame lock we'll be giving one of those away here at the end of the month or uh, late january so super excited about that hardcore hammers or hammer sent me uh hammers plural i always screw that up what they have now full-size heavy-duty axes we've been splitting with this this thing is freaking amazing usa made 
4140, I believe, head on that thing. Uh, we're gonna do shoes. I've got uh, two shoes in the works right now. I'm waiting on a few more that we're gonna be testing out more apparel. So guys, get ready. 2019 is going to be a blast, and I'm really looking forward to it. We're gonna try and get a minimum of two backpacking trips in. Uh, we're gonna be trying to do uh, several long excursion hikes. We're gonna be doing like a 16 mile over the Continental Divide uh, is one of the plans that we have in the summer. Um, in one day, we're gonna do one day, start like it early in the morning and get to the other side by the, by nightfall and film that. I mean, super pumped. So lots and lots of adventures and ideas and new stuff coming uh, this year. And I'm just really excited to take us along together as the GT family for the ride. All right, so uh, with that, before we jump to the mailbag, I got a bunch of mailbag questions here. And don't forget to ask week in, week out your questions, hashtag mailbag, and you might get it answered in upcoming G Gideon's Tactical Show episodes. Um, but uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, duh. <laughs> um, wanna remind you guys about uh, also the Knock Around Sunglass Affiliate. Right there, boom, great sunglasses for the entire family and backcountry.com for a lot of the apparel, a lot of the gear. They often have um, like last year's models or models that are phasing out for a lot cheaper than you can find on Amazon a lot of the time and certain products and brands that Amazon won't carry. So like cool, we just did a, a video on two cool products that I really love, um, the bird jacket and the fugitive flannel. Um, so they have like cool products and things like that that sometimes you can't find on Amazon or other websites. So that's pretty cool. Just reminding you guys about those hyperlinks over there as well. All links in the description below. It helps me just continue to do what you guys see here. And you guys know that because you guys are family uh, and watch week in, week out. So we're gonna jump right in with Darth Kroll hitting it up. Um, so uh, Darth Kroll asks, what you have mentioned different jobs over the years in many of your videos. Just curious, what do you consider the most fulfilling one? And flip that and which one did you find least fulfilling? So I'll start with the least fulfilling. Um, so I started working when I was 14 years old, uh, just when I was like barely legal to be able to do that. You know, you could only work like 15 hours a week or something like that. Um, so started working, um, at Annie Ann's pretzel shop. So I worked at a pretzel shop for like a year and a half. Uh, and then when I was 16, I worked at, um, the finish line. And then, um, I, uh, worked at a landscaping company, Circuit City. I was both the janitor at Circuit City. Uh, and then they phased that job out and then I worked in the warehouse for about a year and then the company shut down. Uh, and then I was a sound tech, uh, at our, uh, at my church that I grew up in. Um, and then, uh, did a bunch of other stuff. So the, the, the least fulfilling one I would say would have to be working the women's shoe department at uh, the finish line when I was um, in high school. It was a good job because I wasn't working food anymore, so I was I was glad about that. I was I was glad to be out of the food industry. And those of you that work in the food industry, I'm not bashing that at all. It just for me, I, I did it. And I'm glad I didn't have to do it anymore. So uh, it, that was nice to work retail, but it was retail, you know. So you're always having to push extra stuff, and um, you know, particularly I love love you ladies, but I worked two years working women's shoes, and most women think that they're about a size smaller than they are, and uh, you always had to bring out basically two pairs of shoes instead of just one pair of shoe because you would measure their foot, you know, they'd be like an eight, and they'd say, oh, I always wear sevens. I'm a seven. So you'd have to go in the back, you pull out a seven because they want to see a seven. And I would usually bring out what they measured. They would try on the seven. Oh, this, these kind of hurt, oh, you know, kind of thing. You're like, okay, would you like to try on the eights that I measured yet? Okay, yeah, all right. And boom, that was a fit, fit great. And that happened uh, at least 50% of the time, seriously, for two years. So, <laughs> um, and it was just retail. So I would say that was my least because I, I worked with some nice people, but when I worked at the food industry and with Annie Ann's, I worked with a lot of friends. So that was a lot of fun, even though it was food. Um, so I would say that would probably be my least fulfilling, even though it was, um, you know, paid pay better. I wasn't in food anymore. Um, so that would be uh, my least fulfilling. And then my most fulfilling is my current job, uh, working in ministry, working at the church. Uh, that is a blast and it's awesome to work with people and see lives change and just be able to help people and pour into people's lives and uh, see people who are, you know, hurting, who are distressed, who are feel lost to find meaning, purpose and salvation. I mean, and, and point them to Jesus is just a blast. Okay, this next one comes from uh, Sawyer Harter, and Sawyer asks, "What one of what is one of your favorite fictional characters um, from your favorite fictional book?" 
Well, the one that just pops in my head right away is, uh, I know growing up in high school, I read a bunch of the Star Wars books and the Bounty Hunter series in particular. And the Fett Man, Boba Fett, the story of him getting out of the Sarlacc pit and going on from there. That was a, a great trilogy that I read. Really uh, enjoy that, and I love Boba Fett. He's like more, basically probably my favorite Star Wars character. Maybe Han Solo is like right there next to him. Um, but uh, yeah, that's who I would say is the books that the Star Wars books that I read of the uh, Bounty Hunter trilogy. Check those out. I'll, I'll try to include those in the links below. Totally worth it. And I would say that would be my favorite fictional character from a, my book collection or one of them. Okay, this next one is from Juan De La Cruz 001. What's up, buddy? Um, what's your uh, guilty pleasure slash sh shameful uh, food that you binge on? And uh, I would have to say licorice. I love black licorice, Australian or New Zealand um, licorice. I mean, I could eat a whole bag in one sitting. If it's dark, it's, you know, uh, black licorice that's got a good strong taste to it, good texture. Uh, I love that stuff and I can almost get sick on it. So black licorice is my jam. Okay, this next one comes from Arthur Fisher and uh, he asks, hey, you've reviewed several uh, hatchets over the years. Which ones are your favorite? And if you were to ask me, I would I would have to go with these two. The first one would be that S wings, like 14 inch hatchet that we reviewed with the leather stack handling handle that's been around forever, the full tank. I mean, it's an insane value, outperformed uh, um, a Swedish made hatchet that was like over a hundred dollars more than that, uh, and was just super impressive. Uh, and it's pretty lightweight and it's pretty compact. The other one that I would look into is the Hardcore Hammer Supernaturalist. I love that thing. It has a much longer handle than the 14 inches. I think it's like 16 or even maybe 18. Uh, kind of has almost like, uh, I mean, it has like a nail puller. It's a very interesting uh, ham or head setup, but it's better than a tomahawk, but kind of like a tomahawk. And it actually has like a, a thick head, you know, like a hatchet would be. So that one is awesome as well. But the, uh, that one will be more. That will be like around the $60, $70. But both are USA made. Both are fantastic. And I would highly recommend looking at those two. I mean, those two are like the champs for me right now and out of all the hatchets that I have tested. CS asks, you didn't like the Spidey trilogy? question mark exclamation point what did you did you not like about those installments so the toby Maguire installments especially now the original spider-man with toby Maguire uh was super cool and that it was like really the first superhero movie that was released that actually kind of looked decent you know the special effects actually matched with like what spider-man could do or a superhero could do um i didn't really like toby Maguire as a character he just Peter Parker, I know, is, you know, like a wuss, you know, not like a, some bulk, bulked up, you know, beefy Brock, you know, guy. Um, but but he did have a personality and something of a backbone, you know, a little bit in the cartoons and in the comics that I read and stuff. Uh, and I just didn't like how Tobey Maguire played that part. I just didn't like it. And the first one was okay. I mean, it was doable and it was for the time like, oh, yeah, it's okay. But as the installments went on, and by the end we're getting to uh, with Venom, and that was a terrible, I can't remember who, uh, off the top of my head, who played um, uh, Venom, but that was not Brock. Brock was a big muscular dude. Uh, and it was just terrible. And all the, the sing-song stuff, and just, oh my gosh, it was just like, what am I watching? So um, those three were horrendous. And then the next batch with uh, Andrew Garfield um, were a little bit better. Um, but they, they still didn't do, um, the, the character I feel justice and just how it was all supposed to be together. I do believe that Tom Holland, who is the, the most recent installment is like the best Spider-Man, um, actor that they've had in the entire installments to date. I feel like he really fits that better than any of the other ones. Um, from what I've seen. So uh, I hope that I have not again seen homecoming. Uh, I probably need to see it just to see it. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I really hope that they do like a really good trilogy. And if they use Tom Holland, great. And if he did, they you know write it well and do a good job, then that might be the best Spider-Man installments that we've seen to date. All right, so here we go. This is a good one. Um, this is from Darren Yonder, Yoder. Um, and 
uh, Darren asks, what is your favorite sit down restaurant and what is your favorite fast food restaurant? Okay, so for me, fast food means that there's a drive through. If there's a drive through not attached to the building and you can't drive through, it ain't fast food. So that's my criteria. Even if they get it to you really quick, like their Smash Burger and Five Guys, those are quick, but they're not fast food in my opinion because they don't have a drive through attached, at least any of the ones in my uh, local area. So for me, I would have to say, for actually local that's here right now in, in my state, I would say Chick-fil-A. I mean, if I'm sitting there and I'm looking at all the drive throughs places, I think I'm gonna go with Chick-fil-A. They just have a great variety. They get, have great healthy stuff and they have great stuff that's you know kind of definitely fast food-ish um, and it's a little bit healthier overall. Uh, if you were to ask me of all time, I would say In-N-Out Burger. I miss that so much, but I hear it's coming to my state, Colorado, so I'm super pumped about that. Uh, and then for sit down, I would have to say Rudizio Grill Brazilian Barbecue. If you've never had uh, a Brazilian barbecue, it's the most amazing thing ever. You'll get the meat sweats, but it'll be amazing. Um, all you can eat, some of the best barbecue, and they just keep bringing it to your table. Uh, great size, it's expensive, but man, is it a phenomenal, phenomenal meal. Okay, we'll wrap up with Bushcrafter791, uh, which says, the short format for the better, he was answering another question, but uh, the mailbag question is, do you find that you, do you find that you have more time for day hikes or actual camping? What do you like better? Well, my favorite is backpacking, where you put all your gear in a backpack, you trek up somewhere where most people are not going to be, and you hang out for a few days, do day hikes, and do different things like that. That's my favorite way to do it. I have not done through hiking yet, where you camp each night and keep going to a certain location and maybe you know then backtrack. I have not done that yet. I hope to do that at some point in my life to see how I like that. But right now, I do backpacking into a certain spot, hang out for a few days, pack everything up, and come back out. That's my favorite. Um, with what we do here, some people have thought that I do like all a bunch of camping all, most of the reviewing that you guys see are day hikes so just to make that clear i mean that's a day hike i i pick a day of the week you know we work it out with the kids and everything else and i drive up early in the morning i hike in a few miles find a spot that i know is going to have really good wood if we're doing you know like hatchets or knives or saws and camp out for six hours do a bunch of testing pack it all up and go back home and spend the night um just with our life right now i can't stay overnight a lot that's hard on my wife and with the two kids uh both being under three so um that's the the process right now now we do the a couple little camping trips here and there this year i'm hoping to do a few more camping trips just car camping uh with my son gt jr and possibly get the whole family out one time that's a goal of ours um, and down the line, you might see a lot more overnights, but most of them are not overnights because um, some people are asking, how do you have time to do that? It's just day hiking. I, I don't spend multiple, multiple days out in one sitting. Um, I don't have time uh, or the ability right now with the kids. I would love to if I could, but I can't. Um, and I'm like you guys, uh, but it makes sense with our format, with our family, and that I can go out, spend a day, film, test, review, and then produce for you guys. So uh, thank you so much for coming over to, here today, checking out the channel. I hope it's been informative. I hope you guys have enjoyed this particular update of 2019, what you can expect. Answering a bunch of the mailbag questions is a lot of fun. I always love that. So keep those mailbag questions coming. And finally, guys, always remember uh, to check us out on Instagram, Facebook, if you haven't already, uh, all the social media. Finally, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.